Over the last few months, I've actually shot for over five campaigns where the images have appeared on billboards for clients such as Subway and Cafe Nero. And when you're shooting large commercial and advertising campaigns like this, there's a few lessons that you might want to be aware of. So in this video, I'm actually going to break down my top five learnings, both practical and mindset, from working with high budget clients on billboard campaigns. So if this is something that you're interested in working towards, or perhaps it's one of your dream goals when it comes to your food photography business, or even if you're working with regular clients, you're actually going to find this advice really handy. So let's jump straight into the learnings. Okay, so my first learning when working on billboard campaigns is to always collaborate with the graphic designer. Often, if not always, billboards are going to have some form of graphic and text on them. So knowing where the placement of this text will be is super important and helpful while composing your shots on set. Yes, you can shoot zoomed out and yes, you can leave negative space, but the most effective way to get a balanced image that works for all parties involved, including the client, including you as a photographer, the food stylist, as well as the graphic designer, is knowing exactly what other graphic elements are gonna be included as part of the key visual. So whenever I'm working on billboard campaigns, I always ask the client to send me what are called transparent overlays. Now, this is basically a transparent PNG document that you can place on top of your images. And the only parts of this document that that are solid and visible are the text, the graphics, and the actual crop of the image. So if I jump into capture one, you can see that I've taken this image for a recent billboard campaign that I shot. And then the graphic designer actually sent me the transparent overlay to place on top so that the entire team can see exactly where the text and the graphics are gonna be in relation to the composition that we're shooting. Now, if I open up the PNG document itself, you can see that the only solid things in this document is the crop, the text and all of these white parts are actually transparent. So when I put this into Capture One on top of the images that I'm shooting, you can see the image underneath and then the graphics and crop layered on top. And now we know exactly where the graphics are going and we can now change anything we want on set in order to make it work with this graphic and just also ensure that the overall image is balanced and the food is still standing out in relation to the text. Now, by working with these overlays on set, this will eliminate the instances when after a shoot, the client requests if you have any images that have more space or that are cropped differently, or have you gotten any images where maybe a bold is not there or composed differently. Okay. So the next learning while working on billboard campaigns and larger advertising projects is working in conjunction with a larger team. So here, I'm not really talking about the team from the client side, but more from your team as the food photographer. Now, when you work with smaller brands, such as restaurants or even cookbooks, the team that generally helps you with the photography will generally compose of yourself as a food photographer and a food stylist who manages the composition and the propping and the cooking. But when it comes to larger billboard campaigns, it's the norm to actually outsource different parts of the photography team. So what I mean here is that you'll have your photographer, so that's you, but you'll also have a lighting expert as part of your team. And then you'll also have a retoucher to work on all the post-production and editing. If you're using a phase one camera or a Hasselblad, you might even have a phase one certified expert as part of your production team. Now with these larger billboard campaigns, budgets are a lot higher, but also the expectations from clients match those higher budgets. And sometimes you need and are expected to have these different team members on set who have very specific jobs that on other productions might be taken care of by the photographer themselves. So when I first started working on these larger billboard campaigns and agencies would get in touch with me, I used to always be stumped when they started asking me questions such as, will you need a lighting assistant on set? Who's gonna be your retoucher for the project? In my mind, I was the lighting assistant, I was the retoucher, and it takes a mindset shift to start outsourcing these roles on larger advertising campaigns and billboards. Okay, let's move on to the third big learning from working on billboard campaigns, and that's the importance of retouching. Never in my life have I heard the following phrases on set so much. Oh, but you can do that in retouching, right? Or 
Can you add that in retouching, right? Basically, if you want to be successful at shooting billboards, then having stellar retouching skills or outsourcing this part of the production is a necessity. You will not believe the amount of retouching that goes into billboard campaigns. And it's not just about focus stacking. Sometimes it's changing the color of the entire set in post-production, which is what we did in this Heinz shoot where the set was actually a green kitchen and then the client wanted it turned white in post-production or the time when the client wanted to change the color of the cheese as well as the texture and stretchability in post-production because the recipe of the sandwich had changed since we shot it. So unless you have freaking awesome Photoshop skills, like I'm talking practically magical skills, and you also have the time to spend on post-production, then you really want to outsource this and also network to find a retoucher that has these necessary skills. Okay, my next big lesson from shooting billboards is always overestimate the time that it's going to take you to do things. So whether it's pre-production, the actual shoot, and even post-production, everything just takes longer when you're on an advertising shoot for several reasons. Number one, there are a lot more people involved from your team as a photographer, which includes your lighting assistant and the retoucher to the stylist. And then there's also the production agency that's kind of the intermediary between the photographer and stylist and the actual client. And then there's a graphic design team. So there are a lot more people on set and that means there are a lot more opinions. So imagine trying to get an approval when you have about 10 to 15 people working on the same set all with different opinions. Number two, larger clients and larger budgets also mean pickier clients, especially when it comes to going on a billboard and campaigns like this not only cost money, but also they rake in a lot of cash for the clients. And that means spending insane amounts of time just moving a pepperoni on a pizza or ensuring that you've got just the right bun for the burger or that the color of the lettuce is absolutely perfect or that the texture of the chicken is just right. And so for these reasons, you really want to overestimate the time that it's going to take you to do things and incorporate that into your estimate. Okay, let's move on to the next shift that I had to make as a photographer when working on these larger campaigns. And that's the amount of creativity that you can bring to the project. When working with food and product brands or a magazine or editorial or even restaurants, whilst all of these clients have briefs and their branding guidelines, there's still space on the day of the actual shoot to bring in your ideas when it comes to things like lighting or composition or styling of props or even the style of editing. But when you're working on these billboard campaigns, everything is locked in during the pre-production phase and it's usually locked in in between the client and the agency. We know exactly how many shots are going to be done on the day. We know exactly what the layouts and the composition will be. Sometimes the agency will even provide a mock-up of the composition. So we know exactly what style of lighting to use, what props are going to be used. I sometimes even get guidelines on where to place my lights and the style of post-production and editing as well as color grading. And so because all these decisions are made before you even step into the studio and pick up your camera, there's actually not much room for bringing in your own thoughts or creativity when it comes to these things on the day of the production. So you really need to have the ability to execute completely on the client's vision as opposed to bringing in your own ideas to the table. Sure, on the day of the shoot, there are some things that won't work and you need to pivot, but the final images are usually extremely similar or almost identical to the vision and mock-up that was created in pre-production. And that sometimes can be hard as a photographer because we as creatives have a creative eye and perhaps that visual ability to see another option that might work better. So you want to be able to navigate that and ensure that you do everything in your power, not only to stick to the brief, but also ensuring that you execute it exactly the way the client wants. Okay. On the other extreme of billboard campaigns is cookbook shoots and having photographed five cookbooks, I think I know a thing or two about that too. So you might want to check out this video where I talk about the biggest learnings I had from shooting cookbooks and they are completely different from shooting billboards. So I'll catch you in that video.